Welcome one and all to another edition of the Defo Show with Luby here on the Five Reasons Sports Network brought to you by Water Cleanup of Florida. Do you have a water leak and can't find where it's coming from? Are you dealing with water or mold damage in your home or business? Then Water Cleanup of Florida is your place to eradicate those problems. Just give them a call at 954-579-0356 for immediate assistance with over 60 years of combined experience between Michael, Robert, and their entire team. They are prepared to handle all types of leak detection issues. 24 hours per day, 365 days per year. After the leak has been located and repaired, Water Cleanup will then clean, dry, and fully restore the damaged areas. Water Cleanup of Florida is fully licensed, insured, and certified to provide the one-stop shopping that busy homeowners and business owners require. There is no need to bring in other contractors. They will handle the entire project from start to finish. That is something I cannot express with enough, not only urgency, but with enough emotion because the fact that my wife and I had water issues in the past, they're all gone because of water cleaning before. Florida. Not only they dissected it, not only they found it, not only they eradicated it, they then fixed the problem and cleaned it, <laughs> leaving it looking brand spanking new. And it was done seamless quickly, and whatever we needed, they were there. Whenever we called them, they responded, not only communicating with us, which is huge, service companies don't do that, or some service companies do, but the majority of service companies are not great at communication. Water Cleanup of Florida is not only great at communication, but they listen to you, and they make sure not only you're at ease, but your problems are solved. And that's something that not everyone does, but Water Cleanup of Florida does do that. Service area includes Miami, Broward, and Palm Beach County. Just call Michael anytime on his personal cell phone at 954-579-0356. That's 954-579-0356. Or visit our website at wcufl.com. You can follow them on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Water Cleanup FL. And please check out our 70-plus five-star reviews on Google. Water Cleanup Florida, if you have the schmutz, we have the guts. Who has had the guts so far? Well... There hasn't been much of the Miami Dolphins because we haven't seen a lot of their stars. Their offensive line's been sort of shaky. Their running game's been shaky. The defense has sort of been up and down. We haven't really seen some creative play calling. Today, I talked with Miami Dolphins correspondent for us. He's covered the Miami Dolphins for years. He's worked with the Miami Dolphins for years. Was a great high school quarterback, college quarterback, played professional football, covered college football for years for ESPN. And each and every Monday joins us on Dateline Dolphins with the one only John Jemmy, we talk Dolphins today with John Jemmy right here on the Default Show with Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. And every Monday, Dateline Dolphins is back, baby, with the one and only John Jemmy. Thank you to Jimmy Johnson's big show of Key Largo. Good morning, Mr. Jemmy. How you doing, my friend? Hey, Luby. Long time, no talk. <laughs> Good to see you. So, uh, everything's going great, man. Enjoying the summer. Looking forward to... Uh, an exciting Dolphins season, uh, preseason underway, but uh, getting uh, everything kicked off at training camp was uh, a lot of fun this summer. So how, let's start there. You're right. It's been a while since we've had uh, the one and only uh, Duncan Jimmy with us. How has your off season been? How has it been, you know, taking a step back from football? Uh, it was great. You know, uh, you just work your core job, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest with you. Playtime's over when you cover the Miami Dolphins, but it, it's been great. Uh Played a little golf, uh, got to spend time with our family and friends. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to getting back into the groove of, of covering Dolphins football. And it's been it's been exciting so far. You know, you, you had a lot of things to talk about in training camp. And it just seems like this, this roster this year has been uh, put together for one sole purpose, and that's to get into the playoffs and, and make a move, especially when you acquire, you know, Tyreek Hill in the offseason. And he's been so good from the glimpses that you see at practice because obviously we haven't seen him in a preseason game and and probably won't. But uh, those are the things that I was looking forward to in in getting to cover the team uh, in some downtime and then getting to see them. And with with him involved at at such a high level, it just makes his team that much more explosive. All right, so you just said, and it's it's interesting because even when I've talked about this, it's not like the preseason's ever been the most important thing. But it definitely, at least when I was growing up, had its importance, and you sort of understood. And we even recently we talked with you in years past of you know what the first game was, you knew what the second game was, you knew what the third game was, and you knew what the fourth game was. Last year they sort of threw 
uh, a wrench into all of it because they got rid of a game and it sort of changed everything. It felt like, and it's and we're seeing it where it used to be uniform from team to team. It was like each team is taking a very different strategy. Where Andy Reid's playing a guy who's won MVPs plural, and Patrick Mahomes, uh, and the Raiders aren't playing Derek Carr. <laughs> so you know, and Tua's playing two series. Um, what what are your thoughts of the preseason now? You're a guy who went for this league years ago and has covered this league for years of the preseason now compared to in the past. Like, is it, do you, because it feels like the young guys, the ones that are taking over this league, Zach Taylor, LaFleur, McDaniel, Shanahan, sort of poo-poo it, right? Like, they, they know what it's worth and they're not risking their guy. Like, the, McVay won't play starters at all the entire preseason. Like, and he says it before it starts. Like, what are your thoughts on the preseason now compared to what it was before? Like, the value of it now as compared to before? Well, I think it's more like you said, it's about the mentality of the coach and the players, to be honest with you. I think some of the younger coaches have seen so many bad things happen, potentially, and actually happen in the preseason, that they don't want to expose not only their coaching style, but their their team to a start without four of their starters because of injury uh, due to meaningless games. Um, you know, they've cut the preseason down. It used to be six way back in the day, and then it went down to four, and now it's down to three. I, I think it's going to be down to probably less than that, if anything, you know, 10 years from now, five years from now. I think they're continue to do that. I, I've got a theory that uh, somebody was asking me about the preseason the other day, and I said, you know what you should do? You should probably have the top 16 teams, all the teams that get into the playoffs, you're exempt from – playing in a preseason game. Yeah, you now, talked everybody about this from last year. 17 to, to 32, you have to play preseason. And if you're 31 right. and 32, you have to play in the, in the Hall of Fame game. <laughs> nice. and, and it's one of those things where the other 16 teams that make the playoffs, they would get together with their coaches and do those two-day, you know, workouts where you have live, you know, tackling and certain drills. You have some scrimmaging. You have seven-on-seven. Seven, you do one-on-ones. You put that out for the fans. But you, you get probably better work with your starters doing that than you do in a preseason game when you're exposing them 11-on-11 11 11, you know, for maybe two or three series. So I think the preseason now for the younger coaches, it's, it's better in practice than it is in the games because you, you can control the environment to an extent at practice. You can't control that in a game. Well, look, and we've, we've already seen some injuries happen. Uh, Brett Tesler was just talking about the Bucs. I didn't realize the Bucs were down a second offensive lineman before we even had game three of the preseason. So it's understandable you don't want to see guys get injured. That That's everyone's greatest fear. The Dolphins have already lost a guy who was going to be, it felt like Trill Williams was really pushing to not only be the third cornerback, but to just be out there. I think the guy was playing really well. So you've already had to make a change for them. So it's understandable you don't want guys to get hurt. It's just, I wonder, we always were told... You know, Jimmy Johnson would play Zach Thomas in the special teams in preseason. Like, we were always told to a certain extent, that's how you saw these guys. And I get it. These scrimmages, you know, during the week with other teams seem to have taken really the place of it. I, I, I not like what you're, what you're saying, but I, I, I just, I'm curious why keep doing it then? <laughs> like, why keep having it? And I get it. Look, for the guys that are at the end of the roster, for the guys who are drafted late, they need this. This gets them a job. Okay, but can't that just be those joint practices and one preseason game? Like, I don't understand. I guess the money, I get it. They make the money. But there's always a way to make money. We found the NFL will always find a way to, to make the money up. Like, why waste the, the – the, to me, the fans – I mean, the, oh, the coaches will find a way, but why waste the fans' time? Here, here's why you do it. You find a guy like Skylar Thompson yeah. who is at the bottom of your depth chart, yeah. and all of a sudden you're saying, well, I'm not going to play two of Tonga Vilo. I'm really not going to play Teddy in the first game. You know, uh, Skyler, go out and, and give it hell. You know, go out and do do what you do. And all of a sudden, he raises some eyebrows and say, not only did he play well, but he played at a level where he was under control. He had everything, you know, as a rookie, first time in the NFL uniform, he went out and made one bad throw out of, out of I don't know how many he threw against Tampa Bay. But the other night here against the Raiders, uh, he throws for 129 yards, a touchdown. He's nearly perfect. And now he repeats himself. And not only does he do it in two game settings, but he's been doing it at practice. So you find a guy like that, or you find a guy like Azukama, who, you know, he, he's a good college receiver from, from Texas Tech. His, his position coach went to school there, has an affinity for him. 
He's going to try to push him. Well, he doesn't, you know, Wes Welker doesn't have to push this guy. All he has to do is let him play. And you get to see a guy come out of his shell and go, well, maybe he could be our fourth guy or our fifth guy. And I don't know if you get that if you just are running one-on-ones and you're running uh, seven-on-sevens and and the ball doesn't happen to go there. You know, he's open, but the ball doesn't go there. Well, did he... Is he going to catch it in that situation? You don't know. Yeah. You put the uniform on, you put fans in the stand, you put the lights on. Guys react differently sometimes. So you need those settings for a certain amount of your roster. It's a small percentage. Yeah. But if you're trying to put a 53-man roster together, there's no other way to do it but to play the game. Well, and it's interesting, and you, you brought it to the Dolphins, and uh, of course that's the one team I pay the most attention to, and it's who we talk about, and... We call this Dateline Dolphin for a reason. Um, I'm I'm so used to having my expectations low that I already don't take the preseason too seriously. I'm noticing on Twitter a very different fan base when they, like the preseason they're living and dying. Like it's not only the regular season, like it's the playoffs. Like every play, every drive, I'm seeing the fans. Freak out. Well, look, if you're the Dolphins, you're happy because it means they're engaged. And engagement right. has been a problem the last few years. We've talked about it. It's sort of, eh, the eh is gone. <laughs> like, there's no eh. <laughs> like, the fans are in. They're in. I I just find that they're, they want to be in so bad that, to me, it feels like they're, they're taking it too seriously. Um, what have you, because Thompson has looked good, and as Az- Azukama has looked ridiculous. I mean, the dude was is making catches like he's Randy Moss out there. How seriously do you take those? Are you taking it, it the way you just said it? It feels like you're taking it as okay, <laughs> like we maybe have something yeah. here. You know, like the fans are taking it like Thompson's going to start over Tua. <laughs> Azukama's going to might be the might be the next Harry Kill. You know, like where are you with that? I'm not there. I'm nowhere <laughs> close to there, Luby. But but I will say the fans probably have a, an added uh, energy to their fan to their fan, you know, uh, excitement yeah. because of what happened in the off season. Yeah. I think anytime you add a, a difference maker to your team, you puff your chest out a little bit more. You know, anybody that has Patrick Mahomes as a quarterback is going to go. We're we're going to beat you guys any day, including you know Monday Night Football, right? Any, any day we play, we have a chance to win, and we have a chance to win the Super Bowl. I think the Dolphins may not be there, but when you add Tyreek Hill to a roster with Jalen Waddell and a, a quarterback that you think might be able to get you somewhere, you don't know where that is, but he's going to be able to get you hopefully to the next level of, of playoffs, you know, getting in and being competitive in that, in that realm of 10, 11, 12 wins, you, you have to get excited. And I think the Dolphins have been yearning for a chance to be able to, to look at New England and say, we have the better team. To look at the Buffalo Bills and say, maybe we have a chance to go 500 with you guys this year. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think the Dolphin fans have felt that way in 20 years about New England. To be quite honest, they, they haven't had a chance. They may win one out of every four games at home, but it, it wasn't to get into the playoffs. It wasn't to you know, have a playoff win over a division rival in a wild card game. It, it was, wasn't any of those scenarios. It was just, oh, you beat Tom Brady at home. You could brag because it was the last game of the year and you felt good about going into the off season, right? So now I think with the additions uh, on offense and with a defense that has really been strengthened because it stayed together and it has a defensive coordinator that kind of knows what he's doing, I, I think this team has a, has a legitimate chance to look down at the AFC East and go, you know, at least the fans do. We should beat New England twice. You know, we probably have the better team. We have a chance to do that. When was the last time you felt that way as a Dolphin fan? Probably in 20 years, yeah. right? 22 years. Yeah. Um, you know, the Jets, you should be able to beat. And now you have to find a way to win one against Buffalo. That sets up, if you're a Dolphin fan, that sets up the rest of your season because now you have a chance. You've got five wins in your pocket, right? Yeah, yeah. All you got to do is get another five. So you, you feel like you have a chance, you know, if, if you can do that within your own division. You brought up the key name, and it's <laughs> the guy that's been a lightning rod, even though he's the most mild-mannered person, <laughs> one of the more mild-mannered athletes you'll ever meet. Um, Two-way only... Played two series total so far. He played a little over a quarter because 
Uh, they had the series actually were pretty elongated. Um, one ended in a field goal. What are your thoughts of it? And you've been around camp probably a lot more than us. You've been around them a lot more than us. Uh, we've heard a lot of good. We've heard more good about him than we've ever heard since he was at Alabama. Um, he, you've seen it. There's more of a moxie. There's more of a confidence. There's more of a, he's biting. When they throw jabs at him, he throws him back a little bit. He's not rude, but it's a different Tua than we've seen. He's leading. The arm strength is is there. You're seeing a little bit more athleticism, as though people are thinking the hip was still an issue last year, and now it's not. What have you seen from Tua so far? What are your thoughts on him heading into the regular season? He's been good, Luby. He's been good in training camp. You know, I, I'm not going to, you know, get the pom-poms out and, and fluff him up to, you know, to be somebody he's not. He's looked really good. He's had a couple of days that have been rocky. Yeah, yeah, Other than sweet. that, he's bounced back and 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 played like a starting quarterback in the National Football League. He's been accurate. He was on time. He's been a leader. He's been, uh, you know, talking it up with the rest of the guys. I think he has an added confidence because he feels good about the offense that he's in. He feels good about uh, his head coach being an offensive-minded guy that he can bounce probably – different things out and feel at liberty to say, I don't like that. Let's get it out. And the coach go, cool. I got you. It's out. Yeah. Or let's tweak it. Let's work on it, you know, in another way out of another formation. So I think the rapport is important for a starting quarterback at any level in any league. You have to have a relationship with your head coach because you're essentially the head coach on the field. Yeah. You're essentially that leader. You know, you're an extension of the staff but yet you are the leader of men in the huddle. Uh -huh. So you have to be able to have that carryover and you have to have that confidence and that backing from the head coach. And I think Tua finally feels like, you know, he, he can do pretty much whatever he wants because it's his team. And I think the head coach has given him that confidence to feel that way, that he can finally not worry about, you know, letting his hair down and, and just saying whatever comes to his lips, you know, and being able to be one of the guys yet, be the leader that his his say is the last say and this is how we're going to go about how we do things on offense and i i think that's given him an added boost at training camp and it's carried over to his confidence throwing the football down the field uh, it also helps that there's much more room to throw the football when you have tyree kill creating space and jalen waddle on the other side uh to be able to do the same thing and now you just have to find who fits well around them who fits well behind Tua? Is there a fullback in our future? Yes. Uh, how does he fit into the offense? Uh, Mike kosicki has been a ghost kind of in this offense so far. Has he become a bigger role or has he become a lesser role than some other guys like Tanner Connor and, and Durham Smythe nice. maybe split the load at tight end? But when it comes back to Tua, Tua is the guy that's going to be orchestrating everything. And I think he has the confidence and he has the skill set in this offense to be able to do what it takes to win games. Well, and that you just brought up the, the, the other two things that we haven't brought up that you brought up. One of them is a comma. Uh, Thompson have been the positive Tua has been the question mark. Then Gesicki, who was tagging people were excited to have back. Not only he played the last game, he was playing into the, the second half in the third quarter. He was playing. He, the big question mark around him has been his blocking skills. His missed block is what allowed Teddy Bridgewater to be on an Island leading to a safety in the second quarter of a preseason game. Um, that has been actually was raised to like the number one question after this game is, huh, why is he out there? And what does that mean? When you've been around the team, you've been around th this game for a long time, and you have a starting tight end into the third quarter of a preseason game, it's not the best look. And people question where did he fit in this offense? This was more of a, as good as Greg Kittle is, he's a blocker. Like he's a guy that goes out and is great in the passing game, but he's a throwback. He's like a Bavaro. Well, he'll go and block too. You know, he's like a Gronk in that regard. Kasiki isn't, and, and he never really hid from that. Are we seeing those questions brought to the surface? I mean, does he have a place in this offense with what we've seen so far in this preseason? Well, that they're legitimate questions because it happens day after day after day, and you're kind of going, where's where's the guy, the big, you know, six, six good. tight end that they split out? <laughs> And he looks like a wide receiver and he's a mismatch nightmare. And, you know, they're asking him to put his hand in the ground and, and block, which was never his skill set, probably at any level of football, no matter how bigger, you know, how much bigger he was than the hundred pound 
guy he was going against when he yeah. was, you know, eight years old or nine years old. So, yeah, you, you wonder if there's other tight ends on this roster that fit the scheme a little bit better than Mike does right now. And, and I, my answer is yes, from what I've seen and what they were asking him to do. Mike Kosicki is a guy that needs to gather speed. He needs to gather a, a little bit of a, a, of a gate and roll in and out of routes mm. on corners, on outs, on ins. But it's, it's never stop, plant, turn your shoulders to the quarterback, mm. catch the ball, and then turn around again because it takes, it takes him a little while to get up to top speed. Mm. And if you've noticed over the, over the years, his catches in the red zone are over people yep. in the middle of the field. It's on the perimeter running away from a linebacker or a nickel back or a safety. It's not standing still catching the ball and then making somebody miss mm. and go for another 10 yards. And I, I think that – this offense so far from what I've seen, I mean, when you mentioned the guy playing that deep into the third quarter of a game of a preseason game, and he's your starting tight end, um, you're going, well, why? They're trying to get him work. Or are they trying to get him work at different things that he's not accustomed to? Or is he just maybe the third guy? Maybe he's just another guy at that position on this team this year. I don't, I don't have the, you know, the, the right. clear answer to that question. But for me, it looks like Durham Smythe and Tanner Connor so far have had an upper hand at what they're asking the tight end position to do because they have that skill set. Mike's more of a, of a wide receiver, and he'd admit that. He'd be the first guy to admit that. I'm better, flexed out, give me the mismatch. You've got Tyreek or Jalen, but if you like my mismatch, it's pretty much on, the, on their you know, third or fourth uh, best cover guy. Yeah. Just put it close, and I'll, I'll come down with it. But it doesn't look like they're asking that out of him in this offense. Well, and then, and then the other thing off of that is uh, with Mike McDaniel was a run game, right? The, he was the run game coordinator for San Francisco with one of the best run games in football. He went on to be the offensive coordinator but was still responsible for the run game. Went on to be a big part of Debo Samuel going from a receiver to whatever the hell Debo Samuel is now as good an all-around all weapon as we've had in the NFL for years and he was a big part of that. So the idea was it's going to be based off the run game. They brought in three running backs that are all experienced that are all expected to get big time in this offense. And so far the running game has struggled. I don't know what to do because, again, to me, you still haven't seen Turn Armstead, who was the big outside of Tariq Hill. Armstead was a bigger one for me because they needed to solidify the offensive line, and they went and got the best offensive lineman on the market. He hasn't played a minute yet. And it wasn't because of injuries. They're just being smart. And he won't. He won't. And that's my thing. So how how hard can you be on the run game if he's not even out there at all? Well, you you can be you can't be uh, overly critical, but you can uh, raise an eyebrow to mm. it because um, the scheme is supposed to remedy the Locking. ill of this offensive line. Yeah. And so far, you know, they they I guess the premise of this offensive line, Luby, is. They want to run in unison off the ball, mm. right? They want to be able to take people and run off the football, create daylight for these fast running backs to press the line of scrimmage, look where the daylight is. There's no, no, there's no predetermined hole that they're going to run through. It's just wherever the daylight is, use your speed, press that line of scrimmage, and then get to the daylight mm. no matter where it flashes. So far, it's been total darkness mm. in, in the running game for the Miami Dolphins because there hasn't been a whole lot of daylight. Now, that's not being overly critical because it is the preseason. You're kind of getting used to a new scheme. But at some point, you have to engage and move people on the line of scrimmage. There's still four starters uh, that are playing on the line of scrimmage. There's still a starting running back, and there's still movement that needs to be created. And you haven't seen that consistently. Now, the F Philadelphia Eagles come in for two days of work on Wednesday and Thursday, preseason game on Saturday. Let's see if that improves this week, because if it doesn't, now you've got some question marks on, you know, there's been a lot of pass play action in the preseason. A lot of predication, you know, a lot of predetermined, hey, we're going to run play action, even though we haven't really run the football, yeah. <laughs> we're going to work on it, right? That could work in the preseason because guys are so trained, run, run, run. Yeah. But if you're not running the football, you don't have to commit that many people there. Yeah. So... Let's see how it works this week, and if it gets a little bit better, you know, with some still some time off to work on it before New England comes to town for the first game of the regular season. 
Does any of that have to do with play calling? And I get it, it's a run, so how different can runs be? But we've heard that's where McDaniel's uh, a guru is he can make things where they're, they don't exist, right? So to me, that would be in play calling. You'd see double reverses. You'd see different kind of sets when it came to a run game. From what I've seen, they haven't done any of that. <laughs> like, it's been very old school, standard, run the football kind of stuff. And that's not what I've seen from him with the Niners, and that's not what I've heard of him. So can any of that be at play? Because I've been the Dolphin defender this preseason <laughs> and trying to say, look, what do you want? <laughs> like, he's not going to show you anything. Is any of that true? Is any of that in there with what we've seen yeah, in the preseason? I think so. I, I think by by motion, by formation, by what you're doing pre-snap, you can in- manipulate the defense and move people out of the box, um, especially when you have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle that are going to create room. If you see him on a bubble motion, the first thing as a linebacker, I'm going to back up or I'm going to give some ground as a, as a perimeter you know, edge defender. I may give some ground that might create some space for our offensive line. In turn, will create space for a running back that instead of a two-yard gain, you're getting five or six. And, and maybe break it out of the backside for a first down. So I, I do think some of that has been shelved, but that goes back to, okay, if we're going to go old school, old yeah, school, we? we're not moving anybody <laughs> off the line of scrimmage <laughs> right now. So you yeah. need some gimmicks. You need some eye candy. You need some movement. And that's where, you know, the brainiac side of your head coach kind of comes into play. How can I make it easier by formation and motion to, you know, to give us some room on the offensive line uh, you know, to be able to get some runs. So we're in good situations on first down run. Now it's second and four, you know, but at some point the offensive line has to take it onto their own hands yeah. and say, you know, we need to be better as well. Whether we're getting formation motion, uh, you know, you have to, you have to be better at the point of attack. And, and so far that hasn't been a consistency of this offensive line. What is consistent and what we're happy, uh, one of our best, one of the reasons why we're most happy every Monday when we do our Dailing Dolphins with Drunk and Jimmy, of course, is our relationship with Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill of Key Largo. Super stoked to have you all still involved there, involved with Larry, Dom, sister-in-law. You guys, a family affair. You guys, do a, they do a great job. Um, we had a blast when we went down last year. Looking forward to going back down this year. Uh, I have to ask you, how often have you been down there? Because we haven't been in a while, and I'm sort of getting the itch. Yeah, I know. It, once you get down there, you want to go back. And we've been down a, a couple months ago. Nice uh, on a Sunday, and it was it was beautiful. The place was uh, was buzzing. You know, the tiki bar was up and running. You had uh, peel and eat shrimp is coming out. You know, basket after basket. We had homemade pizzas. We had uh, fresh fish. It, it, it was a great day uh, to be down at Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill, and it's. It's an easy drive, you know, from the Fort Lauderdale, Miami area. Yep. It's, you know, half an hour from Miami, maybe an hour from Fort Lauderdale. And uh, people just uh, on their way down to Key West, they'd stop in and get get some food, get a drink on their way down there, on the way back. It's one of those places where you stop right in Key Largo because it's easy access. And the Bayside is just a, a beautiful place to kind of kick your feet up and, and relax. And, and Larry and, and my brother, Dominic, and my sister-in-law, Amanda, do such a great job uh you know from the from the first class service to the first class food uh to the accommodations it, it's just a beautiful place to spend an afternoon or or an entire weekend so jimmy johnson's uh is, is the place to be in key largo for sure the one last thing i do want to talk about uh does no egg even make the rock like at this point i i mean when you had Trill go down and it wasn't even considered to bump him up they immediately went and got mckenzie alexander who played well he actually played well this weekend, right. Noah did not. <laughs> um, where is he at this point? Like, is he even on the roster at this point? Like, it feels like I've heard he's the fifth or sixth corner, and I don't know. With Skyler being so good, you're not going to get rid of him at this point. So that's already one less spot for another position. Uh, before we move to the league at large, I am curious. You Is he on his team at this point? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean... They like a, a lot of things about Noah during the week, but yes. then, you know, that well, that's why you play the games yeah. um, in, in the preseason. It's because, you know, things, things are a little bit easier during the game, believe it or not, than it is at practice. Yeah. Because at practice, you know the tendency of your offense, you know the tendency of your defense, you know the route tree, you know kind of where they're breaking off. Things are a little tighter after a week of, of training camp. 
But when you get it against a different team and you get on the field and it's an actual game, things separate a little bit more. Things are a little bit clearer for the quarterback. Things are a little bit clearer for uh, the wide receiver and defensive back. But Noah has been in a situation where he's had opportunities to make plays. And it seems like, you know, he, he's made the majority of them at practice, you know, f for, you know, what you're asking a corner to do. But in the games, he's been trailing a little bit. You know, he's been off. There's been too much cushion. And we've seen that repeat itself. So I, I think that's a, a legitimate question. Is a guy like that still, you know, hang your hat and say, I, I think he's there's some there's some better play in his future. We're going to still stay with him. Or is it, have we found somebody that we're going to have to give up on a first round draft choice and we're just going to cut bait this year and we found another guy in Crossan or we found another guy who, who was in Thrill Williams. I believe he'd have been the next guy up. And it's at a position, Luby, where Byron Jones hasn't done anything yet. You know, he's coming back from, from surgery opposite X he hasn't even, you know, been able to practice and he hasn't been able to do anything on the side. So you're crossing your fingers and going, is he in three weeks going to all of a sudden be able to come up to game speed? You know, and if he's not, is it Igbenogany? Is it, is it crossing? Is it Ross? It, you know, Sam Madison, who's the new, you know, corners coach has to be able to find somebody that he can trust. And that, you know, you're only one play away from being the guy. You know, X has been rock solid. But if you have one guy that's, you know, a little shaky coming back from injury and he's not up to speed, that's where the ball's going to go. Yep, you yep. know, week one against New England. I don't care what type of reputation you have. I'm testing the guy that's been out for six months. Yep. And if he's not up to snuff, who's the next guy in? Yeah. So, and, and is that next guy in? Where does the level of that competition go? So I think that is a legitimate question. Igbenogany, does he does he land on the roster? Right now it's 50-50 for me. And I, I wouldn't Jeez. be surprised if it's 60-40 the other way of, of not being on the roster. Uh, but he has another week. You know, yeah. he has another chance, another opportunity, two practices against Philadelphia, against uh, a wealth of talent, a wide receiver, and a good quarterback. And then he has the game to prove himself because, you know, none of the starters I would think are going to play in, in game three. So that means a lot of time for Igbenogany out on the edge to see if he can find a way to, you know, kind of get back in the good graces and say, maybe he is a guy we can keep on the roster. Once again, big thank you to Jim, Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill for bringing you. Big, once again, big thank you to Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill of Key Largo for bringing you, Drunken Jimmy, each and every week. Always have a lot of fun talking with John. He's a guy that's covered the Dolphins very closely. He's usually very positive about the Dolphins. He's the one guy that uh, Devo and I think they're going to go over on the win total at eight and a hook. He thinks it could be a push or blow. Thinks the Dolphins should be better, but the AFC also got better. We shall see. He's tough on the Dolphins so far in the preseason, but he also admits it is the preseason. And we haven't seen a lot from Mike McDaniel when it comes to play calling. And we haven't seen Ty Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, Teron Armstead, Samian Howard, Byron Jones. We haven't seen a lot of the stars of this team. So take it with a grain of salt what we've seen so far. Coming up next week, we will have the final edition of the Dolphins preseason. And we'll have another edition of Jimmy Johnson's Big Chilla Key Largo's Dayline Dolphins with John and Jimmy. So thank you for tuning in today to that. Check us out each and every morning on South Florida Live. Just look up on YouTube or Google South Florida Live. Look up on YouTube or Google The Devil Show with Luby. Or on the socials at SoFly Live. Check us out each and every morning from 7 to 9 live. Check out our national content podcast, After Hours with DFL and Luby on the Believe Network. Just go B L E A V dot com. Search After Hours. And each and every day, our South Florida content, or most days, our South Florida content right here, The Devil Show with Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Play the ponies in style at Champions, the outstanding simulcasting room at beautiful Hylia Park. Yes, the grand old lady of thoroughbred racing has never been more vibrant, and you can wager on the races from the top tracks around the country while enjoying a cocktail at the Brass Rail Bar or any of the fine food served throughout the facility. If poker is your game, you're covered in style, and you can play all your favorite Vegas-style games, including blackjack, craps, and roulette in Hylia Park's sizzling hot casino. Get a player's card when you walk through the door for all kinds of generous amenities, including our favorite, free play. 
when you come out to the ultimate casino and entertainment destination, Hylia Park. These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Landlubbers, Raw Bar and Grill in the plantation because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup, all you have to do is go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have their amazing soups. Again, Landlubbers, Raw Bar and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Landlubbers for making you always feel right at home.